there are 76 million of us just here in the US. We are the biggest generation that ever existed. We were called the me ones, the crazy ones, and boy, do we know what that means, don't we? In fact, we have reinvented every single phase of our life. We were the yuppies, we were the hippies. We like innovation. Well, now we are in the winter of our life. And I can assure you, this is not going to be your average winter. I invite you to join me at Boomerology Reviews every single week so we can figure out how boomers are reshaping this phase of their lives. Join me. This episode of Boomerology Revealed is brought to you by Standard, your best option for mobility products. Be independent with Standard.com. Hi, my name is Tim C. Starr. I'm the author of Life, Love, and the Power Perspective. I'm an author, uh, coach, uh, speaker, and I'm a mindset missionary. And uh, I'm here today to tell you a little bit about my story and, and uh, where it's brought me. I'm closing on, in on 56 years old, and I spent the last 17, almost 18 years of my working career in the IT field, doing computer support. I was on one particular job for almost 15 years, and I got a phone call one morning, and they said, today's your last day, go home. And uh, so that was about 10 o'clock in the morning. By noon, I was packed and on the road and heading back home to uh, a wife who was also unemployed at the time. And so it, it was, you know, it threw a curveball at, at my life. And uh, it certainly wasn't expected. And so I had to uh, take some time and, and sort of regroup and take stock of what I'm doing. And, and I realized that I really didn't want to go back into doing the same work again. I was kind of burned out on it. And so I decided just to take some time off. And uh, I really, for, for 10 plus years, I hadn't had much real vacation time. When you're on a contract position, if you don't work, you don't get paid, so you tend to just go to work. And so I decided to just take a, an extended vacation and, and not worry immediately about what I was going to do. Um, I did that. I finished uh, working on my book, got that published. In the meantime, I've been studying law of attraction principles for probably close to 40 years, well before I ever heard the term been fascinated by the whole thing and, and uh, five years or so ago I stumbled into Esther Hicks and her work and that really sort of has helped to focus the the teachings that everybody else is, is talking about without saying it you know I find the whole idea fascinating but I also see that there are a lot of people who when they study it a little bit they you know it's easy enough concept to get your mind around and how it works and so we think that we know how it works and how to put it to work. But lots and lots of people just are not getting the kind of results that they ought to be getting, or at least they think they ought to be getting, based on the kind of work that they're putting in on it. They're doing their meditations and vision boards and uh, you know affirmations, and they're monitoring their thoughts and their emotions and all of that, and, and working hard at, at you know growing and and the end result is just not there. Personally, I think it's impossible to truly do much of this work consistently and not get any results. But there's a difference between a little something here and there and really seeing a shift. Since I had this time off and I've been sorting out, you know, what do I want to be when I grow up? You know, one of the things that kind of came to light for me personally is that we have this paradox internal to everybody and for some reason this is really not being talked about specifically in this whole law of attraction arena but we have I think a, a built-in desire for change um, there's something that I call the, the law of transition which basically says that uh, you know at the most elemental level everything in the universe is in motion Everything is moving. Nothing is truly solid. Nothing is not moving. If you have motion, you have to have change. So everything is changing. It's just a matter of how fast. And I think because of that, it's built into us as beings that we like it. We want to see change. 
it's why we explore new worlds and go to new restaurants and read new books and things and meet new people because we want more. We want to see change. So that's one side of it. And that's why Law of Attraction is all about change. The other side of that is that we have this built-in barrier. We have this built-in sort of personal business manager called ego, the neocortex, that, that uh, uh, reptilian brain. Its purpose in life is to avoid change. It's, it's, it's got a fight or flight program. When it's confronted with new information, it doesn't have, well, maybe this is a good thing. Let's check it out and see what happens and we'll incorporate it. It's, you fight it or you, or you run from it. In order for that to change, it has to be either shocked into it, you need some dramatic, some crisis to happen, where the result turns out to be good, and then ego can go, okay, well, all right, that's fine now. Or you can, you sort of feed it little bits and pieces, little breadcrumbs, until all of a sudden it's in a different position, it's got a different uh, perspective on some, idea and suddenly it's okay now. There doesn't seem to be that I see a, any other options. You can't just, it doesn't reason. All of its function has nothing to do with reason. Rational thought is not part of it. So whatever programming has managed to get down to that base level, if you're in computers, it's, it's like this is the machine code level. This is the basic stuff and it's hard to reprogram. So anything that has made its way down there is pretty well embedded hard to change. I'm working on a process to help people to to recognize change. Change is part of all of our lives. There's nothing we can do about it. You can't opt out of that system. So, you know, the other option other than sticking your head in the sand and hoping it doesn't hit you, the other option is to try to take some proactive steps and, and be a little bit more anticipatory about the things that are going to come your way and try to do some things that can influence and direct the end result of whatever this change is that's coming. You know, and, and the, the easy one for, for everybody, especially the older you get, the more you, you recognize it, is, is aging. We can deny it, and I know people that are denying it, but, you know, somewhere along the line, suddenly they're just going to be old. The other option is we can do things to to make, you're going to get older, but you don't have to get sick necessarily. You can, you can, you know, the transition can be less painful. And so we can eat better and, and exercise more and, and, you know, just generally try to take care of ourselves and be more active and all, all of those kinds of things. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm working on. So tell me three specific things that people can do to go through change or accept change. How, how do you think it would be the approach? A number of things that are are involved in, I have a 10-step program for helping people to do this. Um, the first step in any, in any good, it's not rehab, but in any good program, you have to first recognize that the issue is with you. Whatever it is you think is wrong with the world or with other people, internally you've got something to deal with. That's the, that's the first thing, is accepting your part in the position that you're in. Wherever you are, whatever the situation is, you're there because of the decisions that you've made and the actions you took based on those decisions. So that's number one. What goes right along with that is the idea that, all right, if I'm responsible for getting myself here, guess what? I'm responsible for where I go from here. If that's the case, then if, I, if I'm not really happy with the trajectory of my life and my decision making at this point, I've got to change something. And that is, that begins with something as simple as just, you change the, the kinds of input that you get. You need to change your sources of information, uh, sources of input. You know, if you're hanging around with people who do nothing but complain about their lot in life, you know, that's where you're going to be focused. And if, you're, if you know about the law of attraction, that's what it's all about. What are you thinking about? Where's your mind most of the time? And if you're over here bitching and moaning, you're going to get more of the same. You know? So start looking for other people. Start looking for people with a different perspective on life. And, and it doesn't have to be 180 degrees, just different. And I think um, that's a big part of it. So if you did just those things, you will see a shift 
in all kinds of things in your life. And it's, and it's the rising tide metaphor is really appropriate because you will see, if you want to focus on one thing in your life, let's say you want to make more money, which is a common one, if you are applying these principles, you will also have more abundance in other areas of your life just because it's a, these are not, they're not specific concepts to money. It's about abundance and prosperity and, and it's a mindset thing. And you want to change your life? Change the way you think about it. That's it. It is that simple. Doing that work takes a little time and persistence and practice, but it's not necessarily hard. I'm getting ready to go on another road trip. This time I'm going with a friend that wants to visit her grandchildren. It's going to be lots of fun. But she's having some issues getting in and out of the bed and sometimes even walking. So that's why I'm going to take one of my favorite standard products, the Metro Travel Bed King. It's very easy to carry, very light. I can carry in road trips or even at the airport. What's most important is when we get there, no matter what bed she will have, it will adjust to that bed and it also adjusts the height. Like I said, it's very easy to use and she can also use as a walking cane. And this sleek design doesn't get in the way of the home at all. So we are going to have a fun time and she'll have the assistance she needs getting in and out of the bed. You know, if you travel a lot, visit loved ones, don't forget to get for yourself a Metro Travel Bed Cane from Standard. That's a great product. Hi, I'm Mary Lysett Harrison, owner of Mill Creek Herbs, author, teacher, wild crafter and creator of Thrive Tonic Liquid Herbal Extract. I am delighted to be here today to help give you information to understand how to use herbs safely and appropriately for your health. And I've brought some samples with me here today of things that I carry in my pharmacy and I use really frequently for the benefit that they offer. The first thing I have is arnica oil. I go to the mountains and I pick the arnica. I leave it in olive oil for several weeks and arnica is good for pain with movement. Some of you may use an arnica ointment that you can get at the health food store for arthritis or sprains. And then I grow my own St. John's wort and not very many people know that St. John's wort topically is really good for pain from injury and will resolve severe bruising quickly. What we're looking for when we make our own preparations of herbs is how to get the plant in a stable form so that when it's not growing in your garden in August, it's February, you can go to your cupboard and take it out. And the beauty of this is to have these things at your fingertips in your home for yourself and your family really helps you to maintain health and wellness in the home and, and hopefully stay well. Another thing, I use a lot of wild plants. Now this is a salve, and a salve is something you put on your skin, kind of like an ointment, and I make this salve from pinion sap and St. John's wort oil and calendula, and it's a great wound healer. Pinion sap does for us what it does for the tree. It stops bleeding, it cauterizes, and it keeps bugs out, it keeps fungus out, and uh, it's like a scab and it will stop bleeding very quickly and I know from experience I made a mistake in the woods one time and, and used that and it really helped me a lot. Now some of you out there in Boomerland may be interested to know that herbs can also help with the change of life that women experience later in life and I have uh, the product I have is called Flash Be Gone and um, it used to be that doctors recommended taking hormone replacement therapy every single day. What I found in my practice is that women really enjoy having something to use on an as-needed basis if it works for them. And this is just a combination of several herbs that I have found very, very useful for women experiencing mood swings, occasional hot flashes. And, you know, herbs, I think, to some are something to try before you resort to pharmaceuticals. We want to be careful about mixing pharmaceuticals and herbs because we don't know what the results will be. And finally here, my last thing to show you, I created this tonic called Thrive Tonic for my customers and, and my clients in my herbal practice because they come in complaining of one thing but then report low energy, too much stress, foggy thinking, poor digestion, and they're not sleeping great. Well, because you can use herbs to address many conditions at the same time, I figured out this formula. And it does exactly what 
um, I wanted it to do for my clients, which has allowed me to simplify my practice. So I didn't have to give them five more things to take three times a day. And it's very subtle and it's convenient. You just take it once a day. What's old is new again with this tonic. And tonics were always used in the old days to help keep you well or help uh, diminish symptoms of things like gout or poor digestion, something that you would take on a continual basis to minimize those conditions rather than try to cure you when you got really sick. Uh, and they work as well today as they did before. So I teach classes. Uh, I love being here on uh, Boomerology because I think that herbs have so much to offer us. We all know that our awareness about healthcare has really shifted. And people are seeking other ways to take care of themselves to maintain wellness and improve their health and maintain their energy. And we all know that that energy is so important at this point in our lives uh, to enjoy the things we want to. So thank you very much from Mill Creek Herbs to you. I hope you enjoyed the show this week. If you did, don't forget to share, thumbs up, rate our channel. These are the type of things that keep us going. And I'll meet you next week at Boomerology Revealed. This episode of Boomerology Revealed is brought to you by Standard, your best option for mobility products. Be independent with Standard.com.